What is it like to see your concept art turned into real life superheroes? What is it like to see them in 3D? I mean, they, concept art to me always looks like the first 3D representation <laughs> of art. But I mean, what does it feel like when it's on the screen and you see someone coming in in a costume that you basically created? awesome here about in Marvel is once you see it, it's pretty close to the thing you designed. So when you see it, you're like, wow, I can't believe it's on screen like that. Yeah. You know? and, it, and since I've been you know, collecting Marvel ever since I was like five, I think. Yeah. And that's when I'm like, ah, it, it just has a bit good place in my heart. You know, I came full circle now. Wow. Uh, yeah. That, I can't even imagine what that must feel like. So yeah, tell us more about, tell us about the first time you saw something on screen, had an experience like that where something came full circle? Well, like, for me, like, seeing the designs that we do is, it's, it's amazing because you just, you imagine it, you kind of do things in the computer and see what looks good and then suddenly yeah. you're like, oh my God, I can't believe that's, that's on screen. That's, that's something I was working on here and then suddenly it's there. Yeah. It's, I mean, for, for us, it just feels like we're, um, we're kids again. It's like, wow, we get to see that. And we get excited seeing the trailers and then seeing the movie itself. Yeah. You know, we see it multiple times. Uh, definitely very lucky to be a part of this team and part of the MCU as well. And um, I kind of always say that I feel like I'm a professional eight-year-old. <laughs> just get to draw comics and character designs mm. all day. So very fortunate to be here with these guys. It's like becoming mm. an eight-year-old just with, you know, your own plays, maybe some bills and responsibility, <laughs> yeah. but still getting to do everything you ever dreamed of doing. Oh, man. Yeah. So Tell me about it. I'm just... So Thor Ragnarok, Marvel Studios' Thor Ragnarok, was definitely a step out of the ordinary Marvel Studios fair. It was a lot of risk-taking. How involved in that part of that risk taking were you guys Man, we were there from the beginning just the design phase trying to figure out a look uh, all through uh, what taika waititi requests you know he wanted to do a love letter for jack kirby so mm -hmm. everything was we had jack kirby as reference mm -hmm. in in our screens all the time so wow. to really try to uh capture the feeling and this design style while uh, modernizing a little bit and putting our own flair to it so Jackson did uh, his... Uh, we, were, we were encouraged by Taika yeah. to really explore and um, go wild with the colors and shapes. And yeah. Andy Park also led that movie uh, and, he, and he directed us to just explore as many options yeah. and even really wild shapes that some of the characters would wear would yeah. go for at this time just because Taika is encouraging the Kirby style. Yeah. yeah. I think the great thing about Marvel Studios ever since the beginning was there's been so many types of movies that Marvel's made from you know, the Avengers movies to Guardians of the Galaxy and Thor Ragnarok to Black Panther. I mean, gosh, the, the plethora of different types of movies that um, Marvel Studios makes is just, it amazes us. And we're just lucky to be a part of that and, you know, and to do our little part to make sure yeah. that, you know. It's, it's, in this oh, yes. it, it's in this movie that I got a chance to redesign Loki for oh, wow. Ragnarok, so I'm like, wow, I'm like, I can't believe uh, uh, Taika, uh, you know, chose my design for it to, to come in the movie, but at the same time, I was trying to still put in that, that Kirby-esque feel to him, you know, and right. that, uh, uh, um, like, Liberace kind of feeling for him, so it's like, that's really cool. That's yeah. the best style reference I've ever heard about a Marvel Studios movie is Liberace. Yeah. Well, that's... Well, Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, actually, um, yeah. the collector for Guardians of the yeah. Galaxy, uh, that Labrachi was also an inspiration for that character. Just yeah. very flamboyant, uh, thea yeah, theatrical. Because they're brothers with yes. um, oh, the uh, with the Grandmaster. Grandmaster. Yeah, yeah. So they both had that feeling. The, Big the style. The same yeah. style. And the story of uh, Loki, he wants to be part of that crew, so he had to, yeah. you know, have his costume part of it. Okay. So. so. Anthony, the yeah. one of the biggest favorites, fan favorites, yeah. in Mar in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, is Baby Groot. Uh, we saw Groot destroyed at the end of the first oh Guardians man. of the Galaxy movie, and you got to bring him back as the cutest tiny little tree we've ever seen on yeah. screen. <laughs> Please tell us what went into making him so cute. What were your inspirations? Well, it started off from you know James Gunn created the character. You know he decided to make a baby version of you know, Groot. And it, it was up to me to try to uh, find a design that matched his vision. So um, 
starting from the pot, he wanted like a just something simple, like a stick with a face on it. But I didn't know he had to like dance yet. But mm -hmm. after uh, I saw the film, the end tag, that's when I was like, well, he dances. And I'm like, it, it was just, it's just crazy. I don't know how, it felt really good that I was a part of that whole um, yeah. bringing him up. And from there, I, I got to design uh, the one in the pot in Baby Root in Gardens mm -hmm. 2. Yeah. And finally, uh, the uh, Teen Groot for, uh, yeah. Avengers. I so. think Teen Groot was really funny because he's such a teenager. Yeah. He's oh long man. and gawky. He's got those limbs he has like <laughs> no control over. Yeah. But there's personality in there. How much do you take the character's personalities into the design? Oh, well, we really look into I mean, we watch, we read the script for sure and see the kind of uh, actions they take and then try to based off the story uh, to help. Uh, inform the design for sure you know and and with a uh, baby Groot the main thing is uh, I also have kids I have two kids so my son was a big inspiration Aww. so I just use his four-year-old <laughs> body you know to, to just sketch him out as as the first baby uh, the baby Groot on legs um, in Guardians too that so yeah warms my heart <laughs> so much you have no idea oh man I just wanted to cry when I was watching him you know in Infinity War when he was like I'm Groot and just Melt in the way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. So yeah. once you guys have made the design, talk about a bit about the collaboration with the film teams. Once you, once the movie starts to get going and things start to really come to life in a tangible way, oh. like post art, how involved are you after that? Um, our department's headed by Ryan Minerding and Andy Park, and um, when our designs are done, Ryan and Andy work very closely with the costume department a lot of times to actually. Uh, fabricate and actually make the costumes. So we do follow up on the designs uh, once it has passed the concept phase and Ryan and Andy are instrumental in that, We're working with the costume designer to get that done, to, to look good on screen. It's like on Thor Ragnarok, you uh, had to design some stuff towards... Oh, uh, yeah, Andy was very... Uh, was Andy designed Hela's costume and her head her headpiece is massive yeah. and ornate and uh, mm -hmm. A lot of work went in yeah. to make sure she looks great at all angles, and there was a lot of CG. So, actually, yeah. Besides costume department, we also work with the uh, VFX vendors in post production to make sure things look yeah. good. Yeah. Sometimes they need stuff even after the movie is almost done or done. Yeah. I mean, the great thing about working, um, being with Marvel Studios for such a long time, that at times we do get to have a character from beginning and see it through from the initial stages all the way to um, almost the final. Mm -hmm. And um, like for me, for instance, um, I did the Ultron Centuries from Age of Ultron. Yeah. The, and it was great to see like it from the very beginning and see it through from the different stages all the way to the end. And that for me was like one of those movies where I went, oh my gosh, I got to see something that I did. Yeah. And you know, it, it looks like the concept I, I was working on for such a long time. So, I mean, being a part of that is just, it's... That's yeah. really amazing. Yeah. So, the Marvel Studios' latest release, Ant-Man and the Wasp. You guys oh, all worked man. on that. Yes. These are classic Marvel characters. They come from a long line of Marvel history, the original Avengers. Hmm. Talk about designing uh, the Ant-Man and the Wasp for today, for 2018. The uh, Ant-Man designs are... Actually got a, yeah, yeah. Uh, Andy Park, uh, our supervisor, designed uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp and the costume Wasp, for the movie. Yeah. Uh, personally, I did Hank Pym's Quantum Realm costume. Um, but I think Andy was very faithful to... Uh, it's like an adaptation of the comic look. Uh, definitely, yeah. definitely Wasp calls back to a lot of classic look yeah. as well. And definitely updating the costume, but still keeping that retro feel with it. Mm. And it's just he just... That's one of my favorite costumes. He did a really yeah. good job. And yeah. Evangeline Lilly really loved the fit on her, too. It's amazing. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it was really cool seeing the Wasp because she's just on par with everyone else. Like, hers was not a feminine version of everything else. It was yes. just, this is just another hero's costume. Yeah. And it sounds like she loved it. So uh, what does yeah. that feel like when you hear feedback from the actors? Oh man, it, it feels uh, like we did our job. Yeah, it feels, feels yeah. good yeah. if the actors uh, uh, like what they're wearing and like how they look, uh, then that's very encouraging for us. Yeah. yeah when, when we design our costumes sometimes, we, we also think about how it moves and how comfortable it would be on them. And um, like, for example, the Dora Milaje for Black Panther, you know, I know they're going to move crazy, so yeah. I had to make sure the designs are, are properly uh, uh, 
thought out so they can move like warriors, you know? So, yeah. Do you work yeah. a lot with the costume designer on that level? Like, is that one of the more intimate collaborative processes when you're making these, well, when you're designing for them? Most of the time it's um, Andy Park or Ryan Meiring that have uh, uh, direct contact with them because we're m working on a lot of different movies almost at the same time. Some of those three movies at the same time. Yeah. So we, ha we don't get a chance to to go see the costumes as much but they're they're the heads so they they have the uh, yeah sometimes we contact. do get um, in progress costumes from the costume department and if it is a character that we designed uh, like uh, so we will maybe put some notes in or have some input into how that yes, is shaping yeah. up and definitely the costumes look a lot better because there's a collaboration between costume department and us and also the effects uh, the end result is better than any one department can do on its own so it's a, yeah. it's a really collaborative process yeah i mean like yeah. just what jackson said like doing the costumes that we do um the designs that um it's it's all collaborative i mean there's so many different people involved with this this process so um we would do the illustrations and we go in to help out um fleshing out the how the panels would look like the back view of something but you know there's so many people involved with this process so when we see something and it looks great we're, we're just we're a part of it and we're so happy to see it I think you know when we see it up on the screen just seeing all that good stuff and you're like wow you know this is something that the Marvel Studios and everybody involved I think is happy with so yeah so you've been a really big part of Marvel Studios 10 years oh. It's, it's a lot of the most recent stuff, but you've really made a mark with, with these. Oh, I hope so. They're visually <laughs> delicious, these movies. Like, oh, I think part of a huge team. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, how, so were you guys all comics readers as kids? Yes. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I mean, like, yeah. I we read comic books, played video games, did everything that, like, a lot of kids did. And played those things actually games. influence us a lot. <laughs> um, yeah. It's you know, everything that we did as a kid, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, I was playing so many video games, I was reading all these comic books, I was watching all these TV shows, these cartoons, yeah. and all those things just come back, and then it's great to go, oh my gosh, I remember this from the 80s, and then it's like, <laughs> let's put that, let's, let's put like ideas in there, and it's just like, you're rekindling the childhood, the child in you, and, yeah. and it's, it's, it's fun. 